Which exercise builds more side delts? The dumbbell lateral raise or the cable lateral raise? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into a new study that directly compares two staple shoulder exercises, the dumbbell lateral raise and the cable lateral raise, specifically to see which one is more effective for growing one of my favorite muscle groups, and that is the lateral delt. Now, this is a question that many lifters have probably wondered at some point, especially given the biomechanical differences between free weights and cables. Perhaps you've wondered if the constant tension of a cable machine actually translates to better muscle growth, or are dumbbells just as good? This study puts these questions straight to the test with a well-controlled, within-participant study design in trained men and women. Now, when it comes to building muscle, not all exercises are created equal, especially if we consider how resistance is applied throughout a muscle's range of motion. In fact, the idea that training at longer muscle lengths may enhance hypertrophy has gained quite a lot of attention over the past few years, and this has led researchers to explore not just range of motion, but also resistance profiles of various movements. In other words, researchers want to know when throughout the movement does the muscle face its greatest challenge. Now, to quickly review some important background that's irrelevant to this study, I want to discuss something called the length tension curve. So this length tension curve contains three unique components that you can see on the screen. The ascending limb, the plateau portion, and the descending limb. Now, these are all terms that you'll hear quite a bit when it comes to range of motion research, as well as research comparing different resistance profiles. Now, according to Atinga and colleagues, the plateau portion that you can see on the length tension curve is associated with sarcomere lengths near their resting value. So what does that mean? Well, if you aren't familiar with these terms, first of all, sarcomere length simply refers to how far apart the actin and myosin filaments are inside that sarcomere at any given moment, basically how lengthened or how shortened it is. In fact, a sarcomere's ability to generate force depends on how much overlap there is between the actin and myosin filaments. Now, generally speaking, when your muscle fibers are at or near this natural resting length, it provides an optimal amount of actin and myosin overlap, where they're able to produce maximum force. Now, when a muscle is stretched too far, which is called a long sarcomere length, the actin and myosin don't overlap enough, meaning there are fewer cross bridges and just less force. Now, if the muscle is shortened too much, and as you guessed it, this is called short sarcomere length, the filaments interfere with each other and cause overcrowding, which also produces less force. Now, if we take a closer look at the diagram on the screen, the ascending limb that I'm pointing to represents shorter sarcomere lengths, and this is generally associated with increasing force production, whereas the descending limb depicts longer sarcomere lengths, and this is associated with decreasing force production. So getting back to the study, the dumbbell lateral raise has an ascending resistance profile, where the difficulty increases as the arm moves away from the body. In contrast, a cable lateral raise can be set up to apply more torque when the deltoid is lengthened, giving it a descending profile. Now, since the lateral deltoid operates near the descending limb of its length tension relationship when the arm is at the lowest point, it has been hypothesized that training with a descending resistance profile might promote more growth. But until now, this idea hasn't been tested in a direct head-to-head -head comparison with actual muscle size measurements in trained lifters. Now, with some of that background out of the way, let's take a look at the methods of this study. To compare the hypertrophy effects of dumbbell and cable lateral raises, the researchers designed an eight-week within-subject training intervention involving 24 resistance-trained men and women. Importantly, this study used a unilateral training approach, meaning each participant trained one arm with the dumbbells and the other arm with the cables. Now, this within-participant design allowed each person to serve as their own control, minimizing the influence of genetics and other lifestyle differences like stress, sleep, and diet that typically add noise in between group comparisons. The assignment of which arm performed which variation was completely randomized and both limbs were trained under the exact same protocol except for the equipment used. The participants trained twice per week on non-consecutive days for a total of 16 supervised sessions. In the first week, each arm performed four unilateral sets of lateral raises per session, progressing to five sets per arm per session from weeks two through to eight. 
Now, if you're trying to do the math, that's a total of 10 working sets per week across the training period. Each set was taken to momentary muscular failure, which was defined as the point at which the participants could no longer raise their arm to a full 90 degrees of shoulder abduction. A target rep range of 12 to 16 was used, and if participants exceeded 16 reps, the load was increased by 0.25 of a kilogram in the following set. Conversely, if they failed to reach 12 reps, the load was slightly reduced. So this double progression approach helped ensure progressive overload while keeping relative intensity consistent. Both variations of the lateral raise were performed with a standardized range of motion, lifting the arm from its resting position alongside the torso to 90 degrees of shoulder abduction. Now the concentric and eccentric phases were both performed over approximately one second each, and the participants briefly paused at the bottom position Position, but not at the top. The rest intervals were at least 90 seconds between sets on the same side and roughly 30 seconds between each limb. The training order of the limbs was alternated weekly to eliminate bias from accumulated fatigue. Now, muscle thickness of the lateral deltoid was assessed using B-mode ultrasound at two specific sites on each arm, including both a proximal and a distal region. The measurements were taken during two separate pre-intervention sessions and two separate post-intervention sessions. So let's take a look at the results. What did the authors find? Well, over the eight-week intervention, both the dumbbell and cable lateral raises produced small but measurable increases in lateral deltoid thickness, ranging between 3.3 and 4.6% depending on the site. Muscle growth was minimal overall, with the largest mean change observed of around 0.1 centimeters. However, the key finding from this study is that there were no statistically significant differences between the two conditions, meaning neither method proved superior for growing the lateral delt. Now, when we look to rep volume, this was similar between the two exercises across all sessions, suggesting that the training effort and the stimulus were all very well matched. So what does this mean for your training? Well, despite the theoretical advantages of Cable's descending resistance profile, particularly the idea that it challenges the muscle at more longer lengths, this didn't translate into superior hypertrophy in practice. One possible explanation is that both exercise types provide enough mechanical tension at the relevant joint angles to stimulate muscle growth, even if the peak torque occurred at slightly different parts of the range of motion. Interestingly, the authors noted that participants tended to increase their acceleration out of the bottom position as fatigue set in, which may have helped the dumbbell condition impose more torque at longer muscle lengths than expected. In the absence of regional specific hypertrophy differences, this also adds to the idea, at least over eight weeks, that both exercises target the lateral deltoid much the same when the range of motion and other training variables are carefully controlled. It's worth noting that these are well-trained individuals and the total hypertrophy observed was relatively modest. And this is likely due to the participants' advanced training status and the short duration of this intervention. Additionally, the overall weekly training volume of around 10 sets per week is lower than what we would often see in real world training settings for experienced lifters. So it's possible that higher volumes might produce different and potentially greater hypertrophy outcomes. In fact, the largest mean change in this study was only 0.1 centimeters, and this may very well be within the measurement error, had the authors included a non-exercise control group. Another limitation was that participants' diets weren't strictly controlled, beyond simply encouraging them to eat in a calorie surplus and consume at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That being said, the majority of the participants did experience weight gain throughout the study, meaning it's reasonable to assume that they were in a slight calorie surplus. So to wrap things up, this study provides evidence that both the dumbbell and cable lateral raises are similarly effective for growing the lateral deltoid in trained men and women. So for lifters wondering which option is better, the answer is that both appear to get the job done. So your choice can come down to personal preference, comfort, or even a equipment availability. That said, future studies with longer durations, greater volume, and looser range of motion restrictions might reveal subtle differences that weren't captured here. In addition, future studies should include a non-exercise control condition so we know if these small changes are real or just measurement error. 
Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you found this breakdown helpful, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of our upcoming deep dives into training, nutrition, and weight loss and the science behind muscle growth. And if you've tried both the dumbbell and cable lateral raises yourself, let me know in the comments which one feels better for you or which one gives you the better pump. And lastly, if you're looking for evidence-based training programs designed to get you real world results, then head on over to my website. I have hundreds of six week training programs for all different interests, locations and experience levels, including my most recent program, the Hyper-Focused Glute Program that I use as an IFBB Bikini Pro competitor. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.